hello this video is probably uploading later than my usual upload schedule but since I've missed the last couple of uploads I definitely want to get this one out there even if it's late you know better late than never anyways I have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing like many many hours a day pretty much spending almost every waking moment playing Animal Crossing aside from like working and like personal hygiene stuff. I got my island five stars and mostly everything is where I want it to be. I have a couple things that I'm kind of like playing around with but I just wanted to share with you guys my tips for how to design your island kind of like a step by step this is what you can do. I'm going to be sharing both things that I did and mistakes that I made so that hopefully you will have an easier time designing your island than I did. Okay, so the first thing that you should do is do your research. It really helps to watch a bunch of videos of different people's islands, especially Five Star Islands, because you'll start to see like what different people are doing, what trends are going on, what works and what doesn't, what you personally like versus don't like. I know that some people have islands that are extremely crowded, whereas other people like their islands to be a little bit more natural. Watching these different videos will help you figure out your preferences, which will make it a lot easier when you go to design your own island. When you're watching these videos, don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Keep in mind a lot of people are time skipping and so they're able to do some things that are just not possible if you're playing the game normally. While you're doing your research, you also want to look up how things work. For example, you want to look up breeding flowers, you want to look up how cliffs work and waterfalls and those kind of things. And you also especially want to look up how bridges and inclines work because if you plan to do those things on your island and you don't set it up correctly, it's just going to be a mess later on. I've done live streams on terraforming and planting flowers, so if you have questions about those things specifically, I recommend watching those videos first, but if you have questions after that, I would be happy to answer them. Okay, so after you kind of see how things work, you get some ideas from other people. Next thing you want to do is kind of plan out your own island. It may actually help you to map out your island. There is a website that helps with this and I'm going to include the link in the description below. So if you want to check that out, you can do that. I personally drew a map because I've been drawing fantasy maps since I was a little kid when I was like writing stories and being creative and weird and stuff. So here is my bona fide map of my island. Obviously uh, some of the things on here actually are in different spots uh, than they were originally planned but this gave me at least an idea of where I wanted things to go. When you're creating your map there's a couple things you want to consider. One of these is sight lines. So you'll notice when you're looking at a lot of different islands that people will tend to put their cliffs towards the back of the island and there's a very specific reason for this. If you put your cliffs near the front of the island you actually lose a little bit of space behind them where you can't really see the things that are there. So in general, it makes sense to put your cliffs kind of near the back, like your highly elevated land, like kind of go up as you go throughout the island. That being said, if you want to put cliffs in other spots on your island, that's perfectly okay. Just make sure that you're strategic about how you're doing it. For example, I knew that I wanted to have my house kind of in the center of the island on like a big mountain right on the top so that I could kind of go around and like see the whole island. As long as that's something that you plan for and you're cognizant of the fact that there's gonna be a big space behind there that is not visible, then it's totally fine. Like I put flowers there that I'm trying to breed, but I don't necessarily need as like viewing flowers. This next part is assuming that you don't already have the terraforming app. If you already have the terraforming app on your phone, meaning you've gotten to a three star island, KK Slider has come and you know done this whole concert, then you can just skip this step because it's really not necessary. But if you're trying to get to a three star island while also setting your island up for success in the future, you should follow this step next. And that is to start putting things approximately where they're gonna go to get your island to three stars. I found it particularly helpful to start with fences so that I could kind of map out where some of my paths were gonna go. But you should also put down furniture and flowers because that's gonna raise your score to help you get to three stars. And you also you need to pick up any weeds or dropped items. Your biggest goal at this point should be to get to three stars so you can get that terraforming app because the terraforming app makes a world of difference in setting up your island. After you get the terraforming app, one of the first things you'll notice is that it doesn't come with a whole lot of features. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is purchase these features using Nook Miles. If you're struggling with figuring out the order that you wanna purchase these, I recommend starting with land, then doing water, then doing all of the different paths. And then using your plan, you can start terraforming. I recommend doing it in that same order with land, then water, then paths. The reason for this is that water can block specific areas, making it more difficult to terraform the land. 
I also think that paths should be last because as you're terraforming the land and the water, you might realize that your original design didn't quite work out the way that you thought it would, and you have to kind of go in and adjust and fix it. So rather than be adjusting the whole time, it makes sense to do your trails last. Again, this is my recommendation. If you want to do it in a different order, go ahead, do your thing, but this is what I found works for me. While you're doing this, you may need to move trees and flowers. If you want to move the trees rather than cut them down, which I highly recommend, make sure that you have plenty of fruit to eat, preferably your island's native fruit, so you don't waste those fruits that sell for a lot of money. Trees and flowers do take up a lot of space in your inventory, so be mindful about transplanting them. That's why when you're setting up your island, you want to kind of put things about where they're going to be, so that way you don't have to like move things around quite as much as you would otherwise. I also recommend that as you create your paths, you start putting a custom design on all of the ones that you want to have the same pattern. Even if you decide later that you don't like that pattern, you can just change it in your Nook phone and it will change all of that design all across your island. So it prevents you from having to like go back and forth a million times and like doing a whole bunch of things. Like you can just put down a pattern. Like I picked the clover pattern and I can always just go back and change that to like snow in the winter or do whatever I want to do. So I highly recommend putting down some sort of custom pattern for different spots on your paths to make them look a little bit more interesting and also to up your island rating because I'm pretty sure that's how I got to five stars. Also while you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna to set aside spaces for houses, the shops, the campsite, so that way you know exactly where you're gonna move them and you reserve the right number of spaces for those specific buildings. I personally like to measure things by digging holes and then filling the spaces that are going to be where a building is with the terracotta pattern so that way I can physically see what space that building is gonna occupy. Plus I don't really like the terracotta pattern and I don't really use it very much on my island so it makes it really stand out as a place that's kind of in development. Also think about the spaces that bridges and inclines are gonna take up. Bridges can go diagonally but inclines can't so you have to be really careful about how you're placing them. Additionally, you can only have eight bridges and eight inclines total throughout your entire island, so you got to plan to make sure that you're not going to need more than eight. They're also really expensive, so you just need to be careful about how many you're using. After you've got the physical layout of your island pretty much done, it's time to actually start setting up these different spaces. This means moving around your buildings, which you can only move one a day, so be very strategic about which ones you want to move first. You're going to be adding custom designs, you're going to be adding fencing, you're going to be adding furniture. There are a whole bunch of different options that you can start playing with at this stage. While you're doing this, you're going to want to think about your island specific vibe. You're going to want to think about the colors of the different pieces that you're using. You're going to want to think about practicality because if you've got a chair but nobody can actually sit in it, eh, maybe not in the right spot. And just like with cliffs, you're going to want to think about sight lines so you don't have a bookcase or a basketball hoop blocking the wonderful view of your little building. I'm going to do a whole nother video about how I set up spaces because I know this is something that's very complicated and can be a little bit tricky. So rather than make this video super duper long, I'm just gonna do a whole nother video about that. As you start to get closer to the end of designing your island, you're gonna realize that there's a whole bunch of things that you don't quite like the way that they look. And this is the step where you go back and you edit and revise. I'm currently starting to get into the edit and revising step since now all of my buildings are in the right places and everything is pretty much set up. But there are certain things that I feel like I could do better. For example, the sight lines for my diner aren't super great and I'm thinking it might actually be better to terraform that area so that it's easier to see the entrance to the diner. It's totally fine to make these kind of changes to edit and revise. That's a normal part of the creative process for literally like every creator out there. Like if I just put the raw footage of this video on the internet, it would be embarrassing. So when you're designing your island, just think of yourself as an artist and don't be afraid to go back and make those changes. And that's a basic overview of how I design my island. If you want a full island tour, I will be doing that during my live stream tomorrow. It's gonna be from three to 5 p.m. EST, so make sure you tune in. I also open up my island to guests during this time, so if you wanna come visit and actually tour it yourself, you're welcome to do so. Bye.